if I replace the Oreos for gluten-free graham crackers, if I replace the butter for coconut oil, since there's tons of coconut in these bars anyway, who's gonna know? And replace the condensed milk for coconut condensed milk, absolutely, and then used dairy-free mini and Joy Life chocolate chips for the chocolate chips. This might actually work. When learning something new, you start with the absolute basics. Combined with the idea that baking can be a precise science, which, you know, with enough practice, it actually ends up being a lot like cooking, which means that you don't actually have to be as precise, but against the point, it's no surprise that popular recipes on Google are typically, you know, one bowl, no bake, or really familiar and straightforward recipes. Um, the brownies last week. Recipes on the box of an ingredient, you know, like an unsweetened chocolate or a cake mix are usually the things that get baked by the average person. Growing up, my mother never really experimented with new or challenging recipes. She kind of stuck to what she knew. Even making a double dark chocolate cookie was considered really out there. Now, if you combine the desire to keep it simple with the need for it to be allergen friendly, suddenly the task of baking becomes near impossible. Taking a chance on a new recipe could end up in a completely unpalatable, crumbly, disgusting disaster. And trust me, I have been there with such expensive ingredients. Like why, why bother? Realistically, like why bother? Well, you take a risk with that kind of thinking because most of the allergen-free baked goods in the grocery store absolutely suck. Let's call the spade a spade, guys. I despised spending my little money that I had as a university student on baked goods that I just threw out because I couldn't eat them because they were just nasty. At least the baked goods I made at home still gave me that sense of, you know, actually making something and that I'll, I'll be first to admit it, having high standards can really suck. I remember how good gluten-filled bread tasted. I remember how yummy butter tasted in a cookie. I remember how rich eggs made brownies. I remember how delightful a cheesecake was made with real cheese, not the fake Play-Doh shit. That cream cheese tang, I've really spent a lot of time trying it, it is near impossible to exactly replicate with a soy-based cream cheese. Soy-based dairy-free cheesecake tastes like Play-Doh, not cheese. I used to cheat on my diet all of the time because of this. Being stressed constantly from school and the perpetual flow of cortisol made me crave the real deal. I knew that combining stress with food that I liked, uh, would cause a flare up and likely another sleepless night and a lot of pain. But frankly, my brain didn't care. On the days I felt the most tired, that would be the day I would buy myself this ginormous magic bar from Williams right across from the health site lounge at McMaster University. Magic bars are a simple layer bar identical to Hello Dolly's, except they have an Oreo crust and they usually have some sort of white chocolate or icing on top of the chocolate chips and the coconut. Especially on those days I was really tired, I would eat that bar in one sitting and feel the rush of dopamine from having something so deliciously sweet and buttery and then I would feel incredibly bloated and sick and have absolutely no appetite for the rest of the day. But the taste was always worth it. The experience of not restricting myself and feeling like I was sacrificing was 100% worth the pain. My roommate and best friend Sohail absolutely loved magic bars and would usually indulge on one of them with me. At home, my roommates, of which I had five, often asked me to bake for the house, which I 100% was so happy to do. Any excuse to bake something was worth it for me. However, they specifically requested that I would bake something that was not gluten-free. If I made something that was gluten-free, aka something that I could eat, it would often sit in the fridge uneaten for weeks on end. However, if I made something that contained gluten, dairy, or eggs, it was consumed within the hour of it being pulled out of the oven. So Hale, being a self-proclaimed magic bar ho, which are his words, not mine, would ask for magic bars every single time I asked the house what I should bake. I would make them for him and he would eat them very happily while I felt like crap. But one day I thought, condensed milk? Condensed milk isn't too hard to make. Why can't I do it dairy-free? At the time, Oreos were not yet gluten-free and the gluten-free competitor's brand was lackluster and very expensive. But I knew that gluten-free graham crackers were half decent. I know, shocking. That was the day that I decided that I will take a stab at making gluten-free and vegan Hello Dollies, hoping, hoping, 
that Sohail would give his approval. So I went to Goodness Me, which is a local health food store here in Hamilton, to collect some graham crackers and some soy milk to condense, only to discover a life-changing ingredient. Coconut condensed milk is an actual thing. Who knew that discovering this small little blue can of nature's charm would change my baking trajectory forever? I certainly did not. But man, I use that stuff in so many recipes. Like you might as well stock up now if you see it on sale because if you plan on baking any of these recipes, we're gonna be using a lot of that stuff. Back to me standing in goodness me about eight years ago me rationalizing this baking experiment. If I replace the Oreos for gluten-free graham crackers, if I replace the butter for coconut oil, since there's tons of coconut in these bars anyway, who's gonna know? Replace the condensed milk for coconut condensed milk, absolutely, and then used dairy-free mini and Joy Life chocolate chips for the chocolate chips. This might actually work. I rushed home, whipped the dollies together real quick using the recipe on the side of the Eagle brand can because that's like the golden standard for Hello Dolly. And lo and behold, they turned out like great, like so, so good. The crust did fall apart completely and did not stay together, but it was sweet, it was chocolatey, it was coconutty, and Sohail actually ate them. He ate them all. These super simple bars were one of the first things that I baked allergen free that I actually liked. When I opened all the desserts, these were one of the first things I baked and sold at events and at wholesale. I named the wholesale version of the bars Grable's Gams after Betty Grable with her iconic legs, lol. Because these bars were truly iconic, just like the Muse. Coconut, nuts, chocolate, coconut caramelly gooey goodness, a crisp cookie crust. Like what more could you ask for, honestly? Throughout the six years of operating Dolled Up, the Hello Dolly was always on the menu. Its recipe has evolved over the years significantly, like the brownies. At one point we actually used flaxseed in the crust to hold it all together. And later we also made our own graham crackers, which was really great. But the iconic taste remains the same. Given how simple it is to make and it's incredible shelf life. Like you can put these things in the freezer essentially forever. Like you can keep it in the fridge for a month, but you probably could freeze it forever and they would taste just great. From a business standpoint, this bar was also very cost efficient to scale. However, I will admit I was a bit upset. The bar remained one of the most underrated bars in our bakery case, but those that did try it really did fall in love with it. It was actually a favorite of most of our staff members. So no one was upset when we had leftovers at the end of the day, or if any of them turned out janky, more dollies for us to eat. And at one point we actually stopped eating them because we continued to have so many janky ones. So we decided to upcycle them. You know, we threw them in the freezer, forgot about them for God knows how long, not forever. And we upcycled them into a delicious German chocolate cake and that cake oh my god that cake was deadly it was so good that it actually was a top tier of my wedding cake which is the only tier of the wedding cake that actually got eaten like if i haven't yet convinced you how good the hello dolly is like i don't know what else i can say so i present to you the magic bar this is actually based on the hello dolly that we sold in the shop except for simplicity's sake since we are just at the beginning of this capsule it's made from store-bought gluten-free oreos instead of homemade graham crackers you can also buy graham crackers if you want and grind them up and do the same thing but in future recipes i will reveal our own graham cracker recipe so you can actually make the graham cracker base and then make proper hello dollies i've also included some optional mix-ins in the recipe so you can doll them up or spice them up however you want like big side note putting pretzels into them like done gg so good i truly hope that you and your loved ones enjoy this simple to make recipe as much as i do with love katarina